Have you ever heard people say that women need to be saved from Muslim men? This narrative is often used to claim that we, whether Muslim or not, need to be protected from the supposed sexism and oppression in Islam. A key part of this narrative is conversations about what Muslim women choose to wear, often with a focus on head coverings. And another common perception is that we are oppressed or submissive, especially if we wear a headscarf or full face veil, so these garments become a symbol of that oppression. Some people see the hijab itself as a symbol of a patriarchal and backward society. So is this true? Where does this come from? Let's take a look. Often, people who hold this belief present themselves as feminist saviours, standing up for women's rights. But in reality, they are denying us the right to decide for ourselves what we choose to think and believe. So, what actually is the hijab? It's a concept that refers to the principle of modesty and privacy, and is addressed in the Qur'an to both men and women. This is not unique to Islam, by the way. Similar concepts are found in Judaism and Christianity. Muslims may dress modestly for religious, cultural or personal reasons, and this is expressed differently within the Muslim world and beyond. Today though, it's most often understood as a word to describe a headscarf worn by Muslim women. Some veils, such as the niqab or the burqa, cover the entire face, although only a minority of women in Europe actually wear it. And while it is true that for some Muslim women, the hijab is not worn entirely out of choice, for most it is a personal choice, and the reasons behind wearing it are multifaceted. I'm one of those people who actually made the conscious choice to wear it. Um, why people wear it, I think everybody has their different reasons. Uh, but generally, if you're a Muslim and you believe that it's part of your religion, you make the choice whether you want to wear it or not. But in some countries, like France and the Netherlands, Wearing face covering clothing, like the burqa, has been made illegal. Even wearing the hijab is not allowed in some public spaces. In 2016, bans were set up against the burkini style of modest swimwear in some French towns, such as here in Nice, which led to police officers forcing Muslim women to remove their swimsuits. Hold on. Let's rewind that for a second. Police officers carrying guns forced a woman to remove her clothes? How would that make you feel? Humiliated? Violated? Terrified? That's how we felt. During debates on these issues, the voices of Muslim women who wear the veil are so often missing. The public is only shown stereotypes. If you think of a new segment or article about Muslims and Islam, how often do you see them accompanied by images of women in a full face veil? Quite often, right? Remember how only a minority of Muslim women in Europe wear the niqab and the burqa? Well, those two types of coverings are the ones most often used in the news. And while there is nothing wrong with the niqab and burqa if the person freely chooses to wear them, why are these items the focus? The media also rarely chooses to discuss the roles that Muslim women have played in society. Did you know that Muslim women have been political leaders in the Islamic world for centuries? And in the early years of Islam, there were many successful businesswomen, like Prophet Muhammad's wife, Khadija. In West Africa today, Muslim businesswomen are some of the most successful. Claiming that Muslims have beliefs rooted in misogyny and oppression is a sweeping generalization that helps to spread Islamophobia. So, next time you see a news article about Muslim women or a debate about head coverings, maybe ask yourself, are these authentic Muslim women's voices? Because maybe it's not Islam that oppresses us, but the narrative itself.